from the second letter to the Corinthians. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted but by what I do or say or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. stopped by to chat with me. She told me that her son had just had his first baby, a boy, a healthy son, and he and his wife were thrilled beyond measure. And in the next breath, she told me that two days later, her daughter had delivered a stillborn at full term a baby girl, unexplainable loss. Her daughter and son-in-law in the depths of grief. Well, this grandmother illuminated for me the fullness of the presence of God through those days with her family. A time of unavoidable conflict, a time of high emotions. She was overjoyed and grateful, and also at the same time, grief-stricken, deeply compassionate. Clearly, what was evident was the light of love that was shining through in her care of her family. I think this is what the Apostle Paul was talking about to the Corinthian church. You know about the Corinthian church? They were a rock and rolling church. <clears throat> they were excited about the love that God had given them. They were full of the power of the Holy Spirit. They were also divided over many things. Strong emotions were tied to their emotional gifts, um, to their spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts have become a source of contention, one better than the other, trampling over the body of Christ rather than building it up together. The Lord's Supper had become a place for the wealthy. Big feasts were offered before the bread and the cup. And while peasants worked long hours and arrived at church too late to eat, with no bread and no wine left for them to celebrate. Some church leaders described their ecstatic spiritual experiences, elevating their witness about, above those whose faith was more pragmatic, perhaps even founded in the midst of suffering. So the Apostle Paul describes a man who 14 years earlier had an extraordinary experience of God. He was caught up in paradise and heard things not to be told. Well, of course, this man is himself. But rather than competing and comparing himself with these Corinthian church leaders, he insists on boasting only in his weaknesses. 
describing this thorn in the flesh, calling it a messenger of Satan, something he suffered and struggled with daily. St. Paul shared the Lord speaking these words. And whether he heard these words in a vision, perhaps, or maybe that still small voice, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Power is made perfect in weakness. God used a weak and vulnerable virgin girl and her betrothed, who had little to say about any of it, and sent his son, also a weak and vulnerable infant, to be the presence of God's divine power here on earth. And the worldly powers sought to destroy the gift that God had sent. Well, none of us like feeling weak or vulnerable. You know, it's okay for us to be Christian when we're in control, right? When our lives seem to be manageable. But my friends, we worship a God who is three in one. Three distinct persons in one being. God only exists in relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit cannot act alone. She, yes, it's feminine grammar in the Hebrew and the Greek for spirit, so she only acts in relationship to the Father and the Son. And even Jesus, who was fully God and fully human, cannot act without acting with God and with the Spirit. The relationship they have is dependent, and it is a dance. It is a constant moving with and for one another. It's a giving and a receiving, bound together for the sake of love. A love flowing through this three-in-one God out into the world. My friends, even God relies on dependence, this Trinitarian dependence to accomplish God's purposes. I have so many questions for God, but the one assurance that I have is that God's grace is sufficient. And I know that because each one of you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, I don't do my faith alone. I can't do my faith alone. I need you to do my faith. And you need me to do yours. So here's the thing. Listen up. Independence might be overrated. Dependence upon God, dependence upon each other, is what reveals the presence of God in our midst, especially in times of conflict. Tommy mentioned forgiveness. We all need forgiveness. Forgiveness, the need for forgiveness, that means we become vulnerable. We become weak. We know we've screwed up. We need something we can't get from ourselves. It's something that God gives to us. Jesus Christ is revealed each and every time that we are able to reach out and help someone who's suffering. Each and every time we are able to receive forgiveness. And Jesus Christ is revealed each and every time that we allow ourselves also to be helped. Now, this idea of opening ourselves to be helped by another, to be forgiven by another, may actually be the most difficult part of being Christian. Opening up to be loved by God is hard. We can't take it in. God's love is so vast. And receiving God's love means that we are vulnerable. Amen? A little louder. Amen? Amen. 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 <clears throat> Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he's one of only a handful of people who spoke out against Hitler's idea that the church needed to be purified. Bonhoeffer was imprisoned in a concentration camp where he would lose his life only days before the end of the Nazi regime. And he wrote this, we are free only when we are bound together in relationship. He said, being free means being free for the other. 
only in relationship with the other am I free. So on this Independence Day weekend, I want us to consider that being free for love is all that really matters. And it is ours, the church, to share this depend dance with the world, a dance of dependency on one another, a trust in a loving God that spills out into our lives, no matter our joys or our concerns. When we and the church dance together, we are sharing with the world that our true freedom is the freedom to love one another. The Apostle Paul loved the Corinthian church. Even with all their division, he wanted them to rely on the grace of God, God's grace sufficient, grace that is only experienced through living relationship with God, with others, with family, with friends, and even enemies. Grace that is sufficient in the midst of every conflict and division, in the midst of woundedness and suffering. Power is made perfect in weakness. The only power that is perfect, my friends, is love. Think about this friend of mine, this grandmother, whose own heart was torn in the conflict of great joy and suffering. She offered and invited that conflict to be transformed into a love that was freely given to her family in their great time of need. Following in the way of Jesus invites us to so many ways of being, doesn't it? <clears throat> but today, let's remember that it also invites us to becoming vulnerable and to inviting our family and our friends into that vulnerability so that God's perfect love might be revealed. The 4th of July is the day we celebrate the freedom established by the forefathers of our nation, entitling each individual to the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we can be thankful and proud of our heritage. Though today, we are a divided nation, and at times unable to accomplish these freedoms. But my friends, God's grace is sufficient. We, the church, we have everything we need to live in perfect freedom. And that is the freedom given through God to love, given for love. And we don't accomplish that independently. It takes each one of us loving and living in right relationship with God and with one another. I would invite you each to stand for a moment. And I am going to ask you to face someone nearby. Hopefully we can face in pairs, but if you need to do a threesome, that's okay too. So has everyone found a pair? And those of you at home, I invite you, if you, or if you are with someone, to face someone. And if you are alone, you're going to face me as we offer this to one another. Look at your partner. And say out loud, and I want you to repeat after me, God loves you. And now I want you to repeat to your partner, I love you. And now repeat, and there is nothing you can do about it. That's the dependence. Thanks be to God. Amen.